Hi guys, I'm back with another video or another tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a game launcher for all your game maker games that you create. Now I had actually done this project before and I created it using game maker but this time around for this tutorial I'm going to be using unity because when creating the project before I learned that because GameMaker is a sandbox program, it's a little harder to do some of those things that you would need to when it comes to downloading files and all that. So Unity runs off sheet C Sharp, which makes it a lot easier, gives me a lot more flexibility to do all that kind of stuff. It will mean a little more complicated code, but it actually won't be too bad, and it'll still run our GameMaker games just fine. So you see in WoW, there is these different tabs here, each for a different game. And if you don't know, what you do is you all have a game like WoW. If you have it installed, you can play it and you just push this button and it'll run WoW. Well, Blizzard has another game called Diablo. I don't have that installed, but easily I can just click this install button and then I it would show play just like that. Or for something like Overwatch or let me see, our oh, Hearthstone, let's say, it needs to be updated. So I can just click this update button and it'll update it. And so that's what we're going to be creating today. This kind of thing for our games, though, to make it easier for people to access our games and access the content that we create. So let's say you have your game here. So this is just a some game I created. And it's complete and you're ready to share it with the world. So what you do is next to this play button, you'll see this button here to create an executable. Likewise, you can go to File, oops, File, Create Application, and it'll do the same thing. The name does not matter, the location does not matter, just as long as you remember the name and the location. But what does matter is right here, you want to change this to a zip file. I'm going to be saving it as a zip file because that'll make um, streaming it through the web to our actual computers a lot faster because zip files are more compressed. Oh, you can save it. For me, I already have it saved, so I'm just push cancel, and there you go. So next, you're going to head over to the internet, and you're going to go to if it will work. You're going to head over to Dropbox, and originally I was going to do this in GitHub but I was creating this video and one of the files ends up being too big so for some reason github doesn't let you uh, upload too big file sizes I'm not sure why but Dropbox seems to work fine for this so what I'm gonna do I'm going to come you will want an account of course if you click my files on the left it'll take you here I believe you come here and we'll create a new folder. You can call this whatever you want. Yeah, I'll just call it games. And then we'll take this here. And I can upload some files. And here is where you'll need to know the location of your files. So here I have the three zip files that I saved for this video. So three different games. Along with the three zip files, I have some splash art images. And if you remember in the Blizzard game launcher, when you click a game, it'll show a little bit of splash art for that game. And that's what this is for. This is just to kind of, before the player installs your game, show a little image kind of representing the game. You'll also notice I have three games, but four splash arts. That's because this one right here, Twisted Mass, is not a game I've created yet. So what I'm also going to show you is how to make it so one of your games can be a work in progress game so that if people have your game launcher they can see what games you're working on and what's coming soon so they can get excited for it but for now I'm just gonna take this link right here copy it paste it here so that I have this and you should be able to just import all three at once hopefully And there we go, we can stop Pokemon, 
project one and the names don't matter whatever you name it whatever you name the splash arts don't matter I'm also not uploading the splash arts to Dropbox I'm only uploading the zip files because these splash arts will actually just have directly in the unity file itself so if I wait for that well I don't have to wait for that so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to head over to unity and we can actually start working now so the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create a folder so right click here create folder and you can call it whatever you want I'll just call it code because this is where we're going to put all our code then we're going to create a C sharp script and we're going to need eventually three scripts but we'll start with one we'll start with game and this is what's going to hold the information for each individual game that we create so now if I come over to here I have my code open I'm using something called Atom if you just open the code directly you'll open Visual Studio I believe which is C sharp or Unity's default code editor so here I'm just going to clean this up and well actually I'm going to get rid of some of these lines that we don't need and so here we go what are we going to do with this well the first thing is we need to make this a scriptable object so there we go scriptable object and another thing I'm going to do I'm going to do above the public class create square brackets and do create asset menu what this is going to allow us to do is create what's called a scriptable object in Unity, which will allow us to store data on each individual game itself. So file name, we'll just set it to equal new game. And then comma, menu name equals game. And by the way, the file name and menu name do matter. Either need to be spelled this way what's inside these quotation marks do not matter so there we go I can save that and just to show you kind of what that does if I come over to unity and now if I were to right click create oh it didn't seem to have worked then I might have spelled the name wrong let me just check something Oh, it's just, oh, it's still loading. Okay, so now if I right-click create, there you go, it shows up as game. Yeah, so when you save code in Unity, you have to wait for it to compile. It just didn't compile in time. So yeah, create game, and I can create now what's called a scriptable object of each game. So here might be one game, and then I have different games. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to to figure out what information about each game I want to store. So I'm going to do public string and the first thing I'm going to do is store the name. I'm also going to do public string internal name. So this is the name that will be displayed and this is the name that gets saved in the file. I'll do public string URL which this is going to be the the link to the file that we need to download so this will just allow us to download the game public sprite with a capital s artwork this is what's going to be used for the splash art for the game and for now that'll be fine okay so what's the first thing we need to do in this in one of these game objects well we need to create some scripts the first one is going to be simple it's what you'd expect and it's going to be the install script so if I do public void install, we need to create some way to retrieve the file from Dropbox and put it into our local files. So the way we do that is we come up to the top and we import some things. I'm going to import by saying using system.net, which is just the C sharps way of C sharps folder for or C sharps 
way of importing things from the from the internet from the webs okay I'm also gonna come up here and I'm gonna create a new a new variable I'm going to call it private web client capital web capital client and then I'll call it client and so this is going to create a variable that is that stores a web client which will be an object that allows us to actually access the internet and access those files while I'm here I'm going to create a public void init which is short for initialize and I'll set client equal to a new web client and I should actually spell that right so I don't get an error client okay and now in the install phase all we gotta do is say client dot download file and then we need two names we need the URL which is just where we download it from so we have that and then we need where we want to save it so what where in our local files do we want to save this so I'm just going to actually create some variables to say where they'll be stored and I'm going to do three different files I'm going to do the zip location and then I'm going to do private string file location and private string executable location. So these are three different files. This one will be where the zip file will be located. This one will be where the main folder will be located. And this one's where the executable is located. So if I come here, I'll actually set them now. I'll say file location equals, in quotes, assets with a capital A two backslashes games which is a folder I'll create two more backslashes and I'll do plus and now I need to put in the file name but there's a catch to this I don't like saving files with spaces in it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a variable here and I'll set it equal to name dot replace with a capital R to bracket space and then a bracket underscore and this will replace every space in the name with an underscore so if you want a space inside of the of uh, what's it called if you want a space inside of the file or the game itself like in the name of the game that's fine but it'll be replaced with an underscore I'm not sure that's required you could probably just do this and it will uh, make it so instead of a space it'll just remove the space altogether and that might work better so if you want so I guess I'll leave that hopefully it works and then here I can do plus that variable and and short for name okay zip location this will be set equal to file location plus the dot zip extension so that'll work and I'll do executable location equals file location plus two backslashes. Pull those gotta be in quotes. So quote backslash backslash plus internal name, which is the name that we put here, and then plus quotations dot exe. So there we go. So now here. I can say we want to download this to the zip location. So we're going to download it as a zip file. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is now that it's in our local files, we need to actually unzip it because this is just a zipped file that we downloaded and we can't run a zip file. So I do private void unzip brackets now we'll create a file that lets us unzip it and I'll just call it for now so unzip but it doesn't do anything in order to actually unzip something we need a new extension so using system and this time we're going to say io dot compression which is again C sharps way of dealing with file compression which is just zipping and unzipping files and here where we do unzip, we can say zip file dot extract to directory. And in the brackets, we need two separate 
um, locations. The first one is where the zip file is, which is just zip location. And the second one is where to zip to. And we're going to say it to file location. So it's going to turn our zip file into the normal file. Okay. And then we need another very, or another function, private void clean. What this is going to do is now that we have unzipped our file, we can delete the zip file from our file location because it's no longer needed. Now that we unzipped it, we don't need the actual zip file itself. And this is as simple as file.delete and zip location. So we delete that zip file. Though, in order to do this, you need to come up here and do using system.io. I'm not sure why you need both the system.io and system.io compression. Like, I feel like if you do import system.io, it should include both of it. It should include this anyway, but that's not how C sharp works, I guess. So it's just a little weird. Okay. Now that we have those, I would like to create another function. This will be a public void, and it'll be called run. This will actually run the game. So I can do process.start executable location. And this file, as soon as we unzipped this file, this file should already exist. Though I would like to have a function that just checks to make sure that we actually installed the game. So I'll do public boolean installed and this is as simple as saying return file.exists executable location. So just make sure that this file actually exists before we try to run it because that could crash it. So if it's not installed then we're going to return just so that we don't accidentally install something that we weren't supposed to. And we also need to, with that, you say using system.diagnostics. Hopefully, hopefully I spelled that correctly. And this one we are actually going to be using to, oh, I believe we, we use this one. I could be wrong. I have it in my source code. But I'm starting to question whether we needed it. I'm pretty sure it's used in the, uh, not the deleting, but what I just did in the, where is it? This system.diagnostic, I'm pretty sure as well allows us to do process.start. Okay. So right now, if I were to go to Unity, we actually do get an error. It's empty character literal. Okay. So I wasn't able to do that. I thought here it's not allowing me to do that it's blank character. Maybe if I did that with double quotes, it might work. I mean, I can try it. I don't know if it's. Uh, no, it's still not working. It wants a character. So, yeah, that being said, I'll just single quote underscore save that and it'll be fine. It'll just be how I originally had it. Okay, so now just wait for it to compile and there we go. We got no errors. Though we do have a error or warning hide and hair numbers there, whatever. I don't care. It's just a warning. As long as it's not an error. So I'm going to create a new game now, and I believe I called one of my games Racer, so I'll just name that. It doesn't matter what you name them here, what matters is what you name them here. So what do we need here? First we need the name of the game. You can call it whatever you want, I'll call it Racer, or I'll call it Vroom Vroom, because it's a racer game. Internal name, I'll save this for a in a moment because it's essentially um well it's not that hard to figure out it's let me show you if i come to the file it should just be whatever you name the zip file maybe 
or not what you named as the pie, what you named the game itself. So in this case, I named it Racer, but you might have named it something else. I'm pretty sure that's what it is, but I'm going to have to confirm when there, there's a better way to get the name just to make sure. And we'll do it when we test it and actually install the game. URL. Okay. This is important. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to go over to Dropbox where we download the files. Take whatever game you're using. So in this case, this one's Racer. I'll click it. And you'll see all this stuff here. Actually, I don't think I have to do that. I should be able to. Hold on, maybe I, I can't select all of them. So if I click here, Racer, without having everything selected, click the three dots here, and you'll see all these buttons. And if you do share, it'll pop up with this. And what you do is you come to the bottom and you say create link. View link created, push close, and then you can copy the link. Okay. Now if I come back to Unity, I can go to the URL and paste that in. And it might be hard to see, but at the very end of it, it'll say DL equals zero. Set that to DL equals one. And what that means is DL is short for download. And if it's zero, that means false. And if it's one, that means true. So that means once this is opened, it will download the file. And that's what the link does. Okay. So for the artwork, we'll need to actually import the art. So what I'm gonna do is I have all my artwork in these files here. I'll just hold control and select these and just drag them in. And there we go. If I come here, the racer game takes in this artwork. So I'll drag that in and there we go. Now the internal name, this again, we'll get this in a bit once we actually test it. But for now, let's go to code and right click create C sharp script. And this one I'm going to call game controller. And this is what's going to allow us to control the different games that we have. So now if I come to hopefully here to my code, I'll have a new file now. That's the game controller. And this is going to be a static object, which if you're coming from Game Maker, you might not know what a static object is exactly per se, but essentially a static object means imagine a controller object in Game Maker where there's only one of them necessarily. So in this case, the static object means uh, that's not really a good way to explain it, but it's shared with everybody, I guess. So. In order to do this, here's I'm just going to create some static variables for it. And for every static variable I create, I'm going to create a non-static variant of it. And that's just because this is some convention that works fairly well. So I'm going to do public static, which is how you make a static variable, image, background. And so because this is static, that means this variable, there will only ever be one of them. Even if I have a hundred game controllers, there's only going to be one of these variables and it's going to be shared with every single game controller. And that's just going to be useful just for reasons, I guess. Now I said I'm going to create a non-static variant of it. So I'm going to do public image without the static keyword and type in background background now the problem is I still can't name them the same thing so I'm just gonna give the non static variant an underscore I'm gonna say public static game selected and this is actually going to be whatever game we currently have selected so in Blizzard if you have WoW selected or World of Warcraft selected or if you have Hearthstone selected then this will determine what image we see and if we push play what game do we play all that stuff create the non-static variant also background this is going to be 
what can, this is going to be an object in Unity that controls the actual background of the image. So this isn't the image itself, but it's what controls the background and what we need to modify in order to change that background. Okay, do public static text and main button text. This is going to be kind of like this, except this is going to be a button at the bottom of the screen that'll either say play or install public text main button text with an underscore and there we go in this start method what you do is you say background equals background with an underscore you'll say selected equals selected with the underscore and main button text equals main button text with an underscore and so that's the reason we have these variants, these um, non-static variants, because when I have these non-static variants, I can edit the variables inside Unity. I can't edit static variables in Unity, but if I have these, I can. And then in the start method, I can just set them that way. So it's weird how Unity works that way, but it is what it is. It's fine whatever okay and if I actually come over to unity I'm going to come over to where it says simple scene in the hierarchy I'll create empty press that to rename it and I'll just call it controller the name doesn't matter if you want to leave it as it is that's fine and take game control and drag it on and we actually have an error image cannot be found oh no so for image and text we actually can't use them unless we say using unity engine.ui. And that's just a convention. You can't actually access these without accessing Unity's UI system. So now the wait for this to compile. Hopefully it'll take not too long. Oh, it did compile. We have a semicolon error now on line 18 position 37 so line 18 and yeah, we forgot semicolon right there that's the difference between unity or c sharp and game maker is you have to remember your semicolons now if i wait for this to compile give it a second there we go it is working if i come to controller now we'll have background a selected and a main button text so if I come here, I can take this racer and drag it into the selected. And whatever we drag here is just going to be whatever, it's just going to be the default game that's selected. It doesn't matter what this is, it's just whatever's going to be at the top of your list. In Blizzard, the default one is World of Warcraft, I'm pretty sure. As for background and main button text, those we haven't gotten to yet, but we will soon. So don't worry about those those are going to be after we finish the code itself so there's a bit more we got to write and that's in particular in the game controller i don't believe we need the update function so we can get rid of that but what we do need is say public void main well um, public ah public static void refresh and this is going to allow us to just when we select a new button or a new game, we're going to refresh everything in the game launcher. So refresh the buttons and refresh the text, refresh the image. Okay, so what we need to do first is we need to essentially change the background text or the background image here. So what you do is you say background I'm going to take it sprite and set it equal to the selected dot artwork. And selected is whatever game we have, and artwork is just the image for the splash art that we gave it. So it'll just take that, take our background and set it sprite equal to the new splash art. 
and we also need to change some text in the bottom middle where it says play or install we need to check to see whether it should be say play or whether it should say install so I'll say if the selected dot installed and if you remember in the game we created a variable or a function that checks to see if the game is installed or not so if it is installed then we need to set it to be play because it's installed and it's ready to be played so I say main button text which is the text that holds the main button and we set it's dot text equal to play else so if it's not installed then we need to say hey you want to install this game and don't forget the semicolons and there we go okay and there will be one more function after this that we will create but we'll do it in a bit for now let's actually create some buttons so if you come here to the hierarchy and I do oh sorry it was compiling so I right click UI down here there should be something called canvas and I'm just going to double click it to view it this if you're coming from game maker is essentially the UI layer so when you do draw draw UI well actually I can show you this is essentially the equivalent of if you go here and you do draw GUI that's the equivalent of what canvas is so what we do is we need to right click and we need to do UI and we will create a image and this will be the background image or the splash art for the games themselves okay so what we do is we come to controller and we can drag in this image into background because that's the reference we need for it so if I come to image as you can see we can do some tests so I can drag in this room room over to the source image and there you go this is splash art but this rectangle is the equivalent of the screen and so right now it looks a little weird because it's not filling the entire canvas so what you do is you can come here and you can press hold control alt and click this middle button and that will center it if you hold alt and click this button over here it'll stretch it and this will remain just fine as long as your game resolution stays in a 16 by 9 aspect ratio if I did free aspect and I stretched it the splash art will stretch so it's usually best to leave it as a maintain aspect ratio otherwise you have to get fancy and do some more complex unity stuff that I won't get into right now so there we go I'm actually gonna come here though I'm gonna select the source image and I'm gonna delete it press the delete button or I believe if you want you can select the circle next to it this will pop up and you just scroll up and do none either way but I don't want an image by default because I'm gonna want to make sure that the controller can handle it itself okay so now I should come and right click here uh, right click on the canvas do UI and now we're gonna create a, our first button and you can if I zoom in you can click it and you can not do that click it and drag it you can move it around whatever you can change some stuff about it like the image of the button you can change what the graphics look like some coloring for it all that stuff what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here to the navigation and change it from automatic to none and then since it's a button if you press the plus here this on click thing here where you push the plus this is essentially saying what happens when you actually push this button and in this case we want to change the controllers game 
and refresh it. So in order to do this, we need to actually create some code for this button. So here's what I'm going to do. Well, actually, let me come back here. I'm going to go to code and I'm going to right click create another script. This will be our last script and I'll just call it game button. And in the button itself, uh, it'll work. I'm just going to drag this on into here and we'll deal with some other stuff with it in a minute. This is actually a very simple code. So if I come to the code, game button, it's all here. We don't need the update function. I'm going to clean this up a little. I know there's ways to make it automatically create like that, but I haven't gotten around to that. So the first thing we need is we need to say using unity engine.ui again, because we are going to be using stuff and stuff in the UI. Fix that up. And we're going to create two variables. Public game game. So this is going to be what game this button is associated with. And public text text. Text text. And this, if I'm not mistaken, is going to be the text associated with the um, button itself. So it's own text. And you could just say something like text equals, I believe, um, get component and then put in text. But I'm not going to do that. I think that's what it is. But I'm just going to do it a different way. I'm going to say text.text .text equals game.name. This will set the button's name, the actual button. So if I come here, right now it says button. It just says button as default. And what I just did, which is saying the text text dot game equals game name, this is going to set that text to be the name of the game. And I'm going to say game dot init. So if you remember in the game itself, we have a function called init short for initialize and this is going this is just what allows us to start up some variables for it so we're just going to start the variables now we need to create a function oh sorry it was lagging a bit there and we need to create a function that is what happens when we click the button itself in order to do this we need to say public it has to be a public variable or public function. If I stop lagging, public void, and you can call it whatever you want. I'll just call it select. So when we select the button, I'll say game controller dot selected equals game. So this is going to take our game controller and change whatever the selected game is and set it to be this game. And I'm going to say game controller dot refresh. And that'll refresh the game itself. So when we click the button, it'll change what game selected and refresh this. Okay, so now if I come to here, I have that all done. In the button, it says on click. What you're going to do is you're going to drag it in itself. Oh, drag. Now I got to scroll down, sorry. Come back here where it says on click drag in the button itself if you click no function look for game button which is the script we made and it won't show up on the screen but there'll be it'll say select which is the function we made so game button dot select there we go and now if we come up here this is the script we created game button we need the game and the text object the text object is easy. You just take this text right here, drag it in. Oh, whoops. Drag it in. You don't need to set any text or anything. And for game, you just drag in what game we're using. So in this case, that game. And there we go. If I were to run this program, hopefully we don't get any errors or problems. It says Vroom Vroom, which is the name of the game. And if I click it, it will select this splash screen, just like we wanted. Okay, 
So now if I come to the top left, or come up here, sorry, and you click game control, now I can set the actual image by default. So I'll say, I'll just type in refresh, so it refreshes by default. Okay, now we're going to create one last script, and then we are done actually programming for this video. So public void main button. This is going to be another click event, another clicked script that says when we actually click the bottom main button. And this button can either be the install button or it can be the run button. So I'm going to say if not selected dot installed. So if the game has not been installed yet, then we want to install it. Say selected dot install with brackets. And then I'm going to refresh this script itself because after we install it, then we can update the play and install buttons. Else, so if it is installed, then we can say selected.run, and there we go. And that's it, that's all there is to it. If I come over here, I have an error here, but I think that'll go away. Yeah, that'll go away. There we go. So we need to create one more button. If I do right click the canvas, do create UI button, I can move this to the bottom middle around right there. And I'll rename this to core button just so I remember it and drag it up one. Now in the controller, this wants the main button text. That is essentially just this right here. There we go. So in, when we create a button, it has the button and the text. And that's all that is. And I believe I set this text right when the script I created, or not this one, but this one, I had a text and it sets that text. Yeah. And you can click it and see it was that one. And I think I did the wrong text here. Yeah, this main button text shouldn't be this one, but should be the one under core button. I probably should have named it main button to associate it better, but whatever, it's fine. Okay, and there we go. So, we do actually have to add some functionality to this button itself. So if I click this button, core button here, if I scroll down to button, we see that we need to, oh again, we need to say navigation, change from automatic to none. And on the on click event, we need to actually say when you click something, do something. So this time I'm going to actually drag in the controller for the object and go to where I said game controller and look for main button. It's right here. This was the script that we created that it gets used when you click that main button. If I run the game, now we can actually debug the game. So we have our splash art with the room room. If I click it, it's not going to do much right now, but you'll see it says install. So if I click this, we get an error, of course. Could not find, uh, could not find a part of the path. D programs unity games dot zip. Okay, that's my fault. I'll show you what the problem was right in the game when we install it. Well, before that, we said the file location is going to be in assets games, but it's going to have a problem because we haven't created a folder called games. And the way C sharp works is it won't automatically create files for you. It'll just, so if you're trying to reference a file that doesn't exist, it's going to give you problems in some other languages. If you try to create a file in an unexistent folder, it'll create the folder for you. But I forgot it doesn't do that here. So just right click, create folder, games, make sure it's capitalized just like the same way. And maybe now it'll work. If I run it, again, nothing. If I press install, oh, and we didn't get an error this time. The button stays gray because it's still installing. And if it take, it might take a minute because 
this game here was the biggest one out of all of mine, so it will take a second. And hopefully, hopefully, hopefully I didn't break it. So just to make sure I didn't break nothing, because I could have created like an infinite loop somewhere. I don't know how I would have created an infinite loop, but it's possible. It might just be taking a long time to install. That is a possibility. Um, this right here, this pop-up, that is actually Unity doing some stuff in the background. When you finish this project, Unity won't do that. So that's part of the problem. It does take longer when you're running it through Unity instead of on an exported file. But if I come to my files, go to D drive, find where you download, where you have your Unity project. So in my case, programs, Unity, I called it this. And go to your assets, games, and you'll notice I have some files now. Even though I just created this folder, games, it downloaded the file. It downloaded the zip file, and it downloaded some other stuff. Now Unity behind the scenes is creating a bunch of these meta files, which is again why it's slower with Unity, it's annoying. But now what it should be able to do is actually install the game or run the game. But if I press install, it might try to install it again, which I know why I shouldn't have pressed that again. <laughs> it's because we forgot to set the internal name, which is this is which this is actually where it is. After you've installed the game once, look for the .exe file. Whatever this is set to, that's the internal name. So I'm gonna press F2, and press copy so that I can set it as soon as this stops being very slow. Downloading games was never supposed to be fast, but there we go. I actually ran it twice, I think, so I unrun it, go to the racer where you have the game, and don't forget to set the internal name like I did. Okay, and that's why it didn't update or register. If I run the game now, or run the game launcher now, it will actually now recognize that we have the game installed, and I can push play, and actually run the game. Normally this game that I created has music, uh, if I can remember how to use it. I don't, I hope you guys can't hear it, the music, because it's kind of loud and it would probably drown me out and you wouldn't be able to hear me right now. But yeah, this is just a game I created a while back just for testing a racing game and it was starting to give me a bit of a headache as I played it more and more, so yeah close that down now. Now I'll show you how to add more games. Okay, so as you can see though, the even when I close that game, it's still running because this is a game launcher and I can just press play again and run it. But I don't want to. Please close. Okay, so now, now what we need to do, we need more buttons for more games. But first, we need to actually create more games. So, just like we created this scriptable object here, I'm going to right click, create game, and this time I'll call it Pokemon. Don't worry about the fact that there's two things called Pokemon because this one's a .png, and so, yeah. So I'll call it Pokemon game there. The internal name should be uh, helper, if I remember correctly. Hopefully I don't have that wrong. The URL, however, we need to get from Dropbox. So I will come here, close this. I actually, it's called, and it says Pokemon.zip here, but that's, remember, that's not the name that matters for the internal name. So I'm going to do share create link, wait for it to create, close that, copy link, and then come back here, 
and do URL and paste that, set DL equal to one. And as I was saying, the art or the internal name doesn't matter, or the internal name matters. What matters for that is in your game maker file, what you set the name to there. Nobody will see it when you're playing your game and they won't see it when they're running this game launcher, but it's still important. So if I come to the, where is it? The Pokemon game here, I will drag in the new artwork for it. And there we go. I will take this button here and I'll just duplicate it and drag it down. And instead of setting it to game racer, I'll set it to game Pokemon. And there we go. Now, if I were to play this, and if I click Pokemon game, it'll switch the splash art and it'll say install instead of play because we don't have the Pokemon game installed yet. So before I go and do that, I will create the last game. Again, if I come over here, I'm going to take this one called Project One, make sure nothing's selected, share, create link, close, copy link, come back here, right click, create game. This one, I don't remember what I was calling it, I'll just call it Awesome Game because it's an awesome game. And I'll name that here awesome game internal name I believe is actually project one project one URL paste it in change it from zero to one and drag in this and actually take my button and duplicate it and drag it oh drag it down and you can get a lot more fancy with how these buttons look and all that I'm just using this as an example and in the game button script, I will drag in the awesome game and push play. And here we go. We have a slash art for the room room game, the Pokemon game, and the awesome game. And these two say install at the bottom, while this one says play. So if I want to say, hey, I want to play this awesome game, I'm going to install it wait for it to install hopefully and it did register because I did get the internal name correct and if I push play now it will open up and yeah, I can play this awesome game this is literally all there is to it very easy game right there but let's say I want to play the Pokemon game now and I got bored of this I Later, I might add an uninstall button, but for now, you're stuck with it. I'll press install. Wait for it to install, hopefully. And it looked like the button finished. So that tells me, especially since there's an error here. Maybe not because of the error. I don't know what that's saying. <laughs> not that I'm paying attention, really. But that tells me I might have got the internal name wrong this time. So if I come here back to my Unity folder, go to games, I have Pokemon game installed and it's help the internal name should be helping me. I thought that's what I set it to. This is gonna take a while because there's a lot of images in the Pokemon game, so Unity has a lot of them. Got a lot of files to create. Let me unrun that and go back to Pokemon. And oh, I said to helper instead of helping. My bad. Why it's called helping, I believe originally the project was going to be just a, something I was using to test stuff. So it was supposed to be helping me, but it ended up turning into Pokemon games somehow. But yeah, now it says play instead. So if I press play, It'll come here and it opens and this is just a Pokemon game that I was testing at some point I don't even remember why or how this was working but yeah th this was just a thing I made 
something I didn't notice, I think. If I come to games. Yeah, I didn't delete the zip files, I realized. So let me just double check the code. And it's not the end of the world if I if it doesn't delete them. Because they're not too big, I believe, depending on the size of your game. But I might as well just double check to see. There's an unzip and there's a clean that says delete that. And when I install it, I unzip it, but I forgot to clean it. Okay, that would be the problem. Okay. So now if I do come back here, I can minimize that, unrun that, and I'm actually going to come to games. And if I open this, uh, it's probably going to cause some problem. Oh, it's going to open Visual Studio for some reason. Not 100% sure why. So here's what I'm going to do actually. I'm going to uh, artificially, apparently Visual Studio really wants to open. So, um, oh, okay. So this is why I don't run Visual Studio ever. I'm going to artificially uninstall the games. And by that I mean I'm going to go to the Unity folder, assets, games, and just delete them all. This might take a second. Okay. But now, if I run the game, this will be like a fresh install. Somebody just downloaded my launcher. They want to check out all my games. They have nothing installed. Now they decide, ah, I want to test this Vroom Vroom game, and they're going to install it. Going to wait a second because. It's a big game. I would suggest making the button change darker color when it's installing. I'm not sure quite how to get Unity to um download it asynchronously, I believe. So that might be something to look into, which would allow you to have a download bar instead of just have it freeze up when you're downloading a game. So that's something I need to look into. Uninstalling is another thing I should look into. Did I actually push the button? Is it still just downloading? Oh, okay. Now it's running. That's weird. It was just taking a bit. Now I can press play. And it'll run that game. If I come to Awesome Game, if I install it, this will be a lot quicker because it's a much smaller game. Install, you can press play now. Pokemon game, install it. This one will take a bit longer as well. But there you go, you can press play. I can run it. I don't know why this Pokemon game actually is a longer download than the racing one. That's weird to me, honestly, because this one has a lot of files. It has every Pokemon installed in it, I believe. I think every single one. Maybe just Gen 1, I could be wrong. Maybe it is just Gen 1. But that's besides the point. If I come to games now, there we go. It creates some meta files, but that's just Unity. Those will, won't be downloaded when you export the Unity project. Those won't ever be created. But we have these, we don't have the zip files anymore, so that's good. We have some meta files here again these meta files won't be created when we export it so those are just a um, side part of unity itself when you do go to export it you need to come here and delete all the games when you export it you don't want to export all the games with it that'll make your file bigger make the whole point of it useless and it, it, what it'll essentially do is make them all installed by default. And you don't want that. You want your users to be able to choose which games they have installed. You don't want them to have every single one of your games installed by default. Otherwise, that would be a bit noxious. Okay, so that concludes this video. I'm going to continue the video a bit, but you're free to leave now. And you're free to like and subscribe. The rest of this video is going to be talking about how to do that last part, which was making a game, making one of your games a work in progress game so that you can't install or play it. You may continue if you want.
to see how to do that. Otherwise, you are free to leave. And I would encourage you to expand upon this, learn a bit of Unity if you don't already, and learn how to make better looking buttons, learn how to make better splash arts and a better user interface than this poopy looking system. I will do that when I create my own because I will be using the same exact system to create my own actual system. I'm going to create more advanced code for mine, of course. So again, I encourage you to expand upon this. But for now, I will now continue and show you how to create a game that is a work in progress. So here we're going to actually edit more code. I know I promised we were done, but that was for the other part. This is for this part. If you come to the game, this will actually not be too hard. If you do public bool and work, I'll do WIP. This is short for work in progress. And by default, I'll set it equal to false. So if you have a game that's a work in progress, you won't need an internal name. You'll need an artwork, but not an internal name. And I'm not sure why I needed to separate this whole section because honestly thinking about it this will be really quick but i haven't actually implemented this before so i could run into some problems so in the installed in the installed phase i will say if wip oh actually i can do this um or not work in progress I believe or maybe it needs to be an and I'll just do it the extra long way if work in progress return false if it's a work in progress then we can guarantee that it's not installed here where we say run if it's not installed or work in progress if it's a work in progress then we shouldn't run it and in the install phase if work in progress then we can return we don't want to try to install the game if it's not even ready to be installed okay in the game controller where we do main button i can come here and I say if selected dot work in progress and actually i did that wrong this should be here in the installed phase i'll say if selected dot work in progress then I will change the text to be main button text dot text equals work in progress. And that should be fine. Actually, I want to try something. Let me just check how to do it. So if I go to Unity, how to disable objects. And the variable is just set active, I believe, I guess. So if I come here and I say set active, this might not work actually. Set active false. Actually, I don't think it's gonna work at all because we can't set the text to be deactivated. We can only set the code, clear that. Yeah. Well, actually, we spelled the name wrong. Main button text. Main button text. So we'll do it this way. This might be able to disable the button end altogether to set deactivated, but I don't think it's going to work. It's got to compile. If I clear. Text does not contain definition for stack. Yeah, okay. So. Instead of passing in the text, we will need to say public static game object main, I'll just call it main button, public game object main button. And this time we'll pass in the button instead of just the text for the button. So if I say main button equals main button with an underscore, I forgot to give this one an underscore that will work 
and then instead of setting the main button text to active we'll do it with the main button instead of the main button text come here just wait for it to compile if I clear it looks like we do have another error we're getting some weird DXLs DLLs or whatever errors but that has to do with probably the installed games that we have nothing to do with what we're experiencing so we don't have to worry about that really i don't hope not we are going to experience one problem and the first problem we're going to experience is that i forgot to actually create the game i'll come here and i'll duplicate one of these and we'll quickly create a new game create game i'll call it um t twisted because the game that's work in progress is called twisted mass so twisted mass for the name there's no in internal name and there's no url because there's no game i'll drag in twisted mass and i'll check wip and in the button itself i will come to game objects and drag in the new twisted game and in the controller now we need to drag in the core button right there before we drag in the text underneath it but for this we can just drag in the core button itself if i come here click twisted mass there we go we don't see the button but the problem is now we don't see the button anywhere and that was the other problem i was saying the fix for that is very simple copy this line paste it above and what I'll do is I'll say not, or I'll just set it to, yeah, not selected dot work in progress. So it'll, if it's a work in progress, it'll deactivate. If it's not a work in progress, it'll be active. And yeah, that's as simple as you need it to be. So there we go. Again, we got some errors with the DLLs, the weird buttons, but that's fine. If I come here, if the play button doesn't show for the twisted mask, it does for all of these, and that's all there is to it. So that's going to do it for this video. My voice is starting to get strained. I don't know how long this video has been, probably over an hour, definitely over an hour. So until next time, don't forget to like and subscribe, and see ya!